Hello everybody and welcome to another Squads for Noobs video back by Popular Demand. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Darth Revan team and because I think most of the players that take that get used out of these videos are players that won't be able to get a somewhat older Conquest character for a long time. I'm not going to be talking about Malgus, so we're talking about the Darth Revan lead team, Bastila, Malak, Marauder, HK47, uh, because uh, Bastila and HK47 are used to unlock, Marauder is a great fifth, and Malak is, I mean, you can run him before you get Malak, and I'll try to address that as I can, but Malak makes a great team. This is a super formidable team, and there's not a ton of info out there right now or like most players, like experienced players with end game accounts use Malgus. Um, so you're not seeing this squad quite as much, but I think it's still really valuable. And I don't want players to neglect getting it just because they don't think they're going to be able to get Malgus for a while. So we're going to be talking about each character's mechanics in order from Darth Revan all the way down to HK47. We're going to be talking about modding for them, Zeta priority, who they beat, what counters them, and then hopefully just a little test run, so hope this helps you. So first we got the star of the show himself, Mr. Darth Revan, and he is such a good character. I consistently rate him in the top 10, top 15 in all my uh, top 25 non-GL character rankings. And I stand by it, he's incredible. Malgus without Darth Revan uh, definitely loses a step in terms of being threatening, uh, but on his own team, he is a force to be reckoned with, and I think his lead is better in other game modes sometimes, and Darth Malgus because of all the extra damage you get. Um, so let's start by looking at his leadership without the Zeta. Uh, so it's actually a little bit surprisingly easy to understand his leadership. I remember it being much more complicated, uh, but there's three main clauses to it. One's very simple. Uh, if I'll sit, I'll sit the Empire at the beginning of the battle, you have 50% crit damage, so that's nice. I think you definitely want to stack offense on him when you can, probably on the cross, because it's going to be turning into more crit damage. Also, his Sith Empire allies gain 10% crit chance and 15 speed for each of their own debuffs. This is something I think a lot of people miss. Like, after the battle, when the battle gets started, a lot of people have Darth Revan fast, so he goes first, which is, he, he's fast to begin with. But then once he gets debuffs out on the team, like Ferocity, I'll talk about in a second, they're stacking speed like crazy. If you have 10 stacks of Ferocity, that's plus 150 speed. And it's not just that, that debuff, it's every debuff they have. So it's a crazy fast team once they start getting debuffs on them and also the third clause is um if all if you get someone on the other team below 50 percent health you're gonna hit death mark on the enemy leader and then you're gonna be able to hit them a few times and then they'll die and stay down it's an extremely effective clause and that's one reason i love his lead outside of grand arena uh, over darth malgus it's a huge reason i like it um the data adds that they can't root, lose their turn meter while they're debuffed, uh, which is really impactful as well. So that's a really good clause. And since we just talked about debuffs, let me go over to Force Storm, because this has the description of Ferocity. So Darth Revan's team is interesting because they leverage their own debuffs to be good for them. So, and this is the debuff that is basically a buff in some ways. So if you do his AOE, you're gonna do Shock to everyone for two turns, pretty strong. You get five stacks of Ferocity for two turns. Um, so there you're getting a jump start. You're getting 75 speed on everyone. Sometimes this is the way to go um, If you can't target the enemy leader to use the fear move uh, Insanity which I'll talk about in a second You might want to start with this just to get their speed up and the ferocity itself the debuff part is minus 15% defense and tenacity per stack so that really adds up. They're gonna be susceptible to debuffs um, But Basila Sean Fallen actually helps mitigate this which I'll talk about when I get to her but you get 8% offense and potency per stack. So you're sacrificing um, the receiving end of things, your defense and your tenacity, but you're getting offense and potency, uh, which really stacks up. That's why this team does tons of damage. Uh, combine that with all the crit chance here and then the extra crit damage, they hit really hard. Uh, Conqueror, his unique, looking at it without uh, the Zeta. He gets, Darth Revan himself gets 100% defense penetration, so he hits like crazy. Uh, he dispels four star on the enemies. That doesn't always come into play. It's it, this was mainly to help him because he supplanted Dark the Jedi Knight Revan meta. This was to help get rid of all that pesky foresight. Uh, but it's not always going to be coming into play. Just keep note of that. Uh, if you're doing a mirror and the enemy has Bastila Sean's uh, Zeta, which gives 
Foresight, that's going to dispel that too. And then they they flip ability block and stun and gain ferocity for two turns. So they can't be ability blocked or stunned. Really hard to slow them down. But however, since this is on the unique, if Darth Revan goes down, you can stun them. Uh, so keep that in mind. And you can ability block them. The Zeta part of this ability is uh, you can't assist against him. You can He can be countered. So he does AoE and everyone's got retribution. They're all going to swarm and hit him. But you can't call assist on him, uh, which causes a lot of problems for it assist heavy teams like Jedi. Um, so that's a really valuable Zeta as well. Uh, last unique is Villain. And this means he does a double attack if he attacks someone that has either Death Mark, Fear, or Corrupted Battle Meditation. So the latter two are very common and then Death Mark also can happen once in a while. Uh, and then whenever Fear expires on an enemy, they lose all this ball of buffs on themselves. For a while, I, got, I was confused and I thought this was an inherent feature of the fear debuff that they lose buffs when they lose fear uh, but it's not it's just when Darth Revan is in there and then the Zeta part of his kit is if he falls below 50% health he's equalized with the other healthiest ally uh, so if you're trying to take him out you either have to take him from above 50% to zero or he's gonna uh, get things equalized a lot uh, and when I said double attack here I mean he's gonna use his basic on someone so this is big like there's a lot of ways to misuse this if you're attacking on Darth Revan's turn, you want to look for uh, Corrupted Battle Meditation primarily. I, I don't like to target Fear because you're going to dispel the Fear. But if you look for someone with Corrupted Battle Meditation, he's going to use his basic and attack again. And you can, that can stack, like uh, the benefits of that can stack because it, it's a decent damage attack. It does hit pretty hard and does buff immunity, which is kind of nice. But the nice thing is uh, if you're attacking the leader, uh, you're reducing Darth Revan's cooldowns by one. So if you see the leader has Corrupted Battle Meditation, you've used your specials, and maybe they have cooldowns of two still, if you use the basic on the enemy leader and you attack twice, you're going to reduce your cooldowns by two. So th there's a lot uh, of user uh, leverage you can make, so you can like dis make decisions that will make the battle go better for you while using Darth Revan. You, you have to be very strategic with how you use them. There's a lot of intricacies. Uh, the main big special he has that most people start out with, and it, it is most of the time the best idea, is Insanity. Uh, so, this is just Omega, so we'll look at this. Um, you deal special damage on enemy and inflict fear on them and enemy leader for one turn if your enemy is not the leader. If it is the leader, it's AoE fear, uh, which uh, unless you attack them or hit a character, they're not going to get to attack. They're going to miss their turn. So it's like stun, but it it disappears if you hit them. Uh, it can't be dispelled, but it disappears if you hit them. So be strategic with that. Don't fear them and then do an AOE. That's kind of a waste. Fear them and then focus fire one other character with uh, the rest of your team. And don't necessarily use an AOE. You can use an AOE if a fear expired, but most of the time I'd wait to let them miss their turn because of that fear. Uh, so fear is really integral to his kit. Uh, Ferocity is integral to his kit. So he, is, he hits super hard and does a lot to debilitate the enemy team. Uh, so I know this was a long time talking about Darth Revan, but it's very important. Uh, so that's it for his kit. Next, we're going to be talking about the love of Revan's life, Dark Bast Lashan or Bast Lashan Fawn. Um, to start, I'm going to talk about Corrupted Battle Meditation. So this ability, it's removing some turn meter from enemies. Like That's not super impactful. You don't notice it all the time. And the debuff itself reduces critical chance and counter chance, doubled for non-Jedi, non-Sith. But the big thing of where this plays in is we see it in the force bond ability. Allies are immune to all debuffs during any ability used by an enemy with corrupted battle meditation. And this even works when it's irresistible. So if you get out ahead in a mirror and your Basil Sean fall and goes, inflicts corrupted battle meditation on everyone. And then the and then the enemy Darth Revan goes and does his AoE fear, you're not gonna get any fear. It does not land if they have corrupted battle meditation. Uh, so you probably want some good potency on her to land that and super impactful. Also, this ability gives her and Revan crazy boosts. And this is why I like Darth Revan lead a lot of times outside of um, Grand Arena as well, because he has to be in the leader slot and then him and Bastl get 70% max health, 70% health steal. That's crazy. And he's recovering protection from um, debuffs from Corrupted Battle Meditation because she recovers 1% protection for each debuff on enemies. That's how you can get some banners back in Grand Arena. 
These are crazy stat boosts. This is way better than the light side variant, in my opinion. And also a little clause. Um, if JKR is in the other team, she gains advantage in foresight for one turn at the start of his turns. Uh, so really strong just right away. She doesn't even have to do an ability, just takes a turn, inflicts corrupted battle meditation, and then boom, you're protected from all those debuffs that you might have been more susceptible to because of all your ferocity, which is nerfing your tenacity. Uh, and then her unique Sith Apprentice, we'll go over it without the Zeta. Uh, she gives 50% defense and tenacity to her and the leader. So this does apply to like Darth Malgus, but like if Darth Revan's in the lead, um, like in this case, it's still helping out. Um, and then whenever, if Bastille's leader is another Sith, so this can also work with like Palpatine, doesn't have to be Sith Empire. Uh, whenever an enemy is inflicted with death mark, fear, marked, or shocked, that happens a lot. Uh, her and the leader gain 5% offense up to 100% for the rest of the battle. Uh, so her and Darth Revan are stacking up really high with their damage. Uh, and you can really tell. Uh, you might not notice that it's part of the ramping mechanics, but that is definitely a big thing. Uh, on her turn, the most popular, what I choose to do almost all the time first, is this fear ability. Because uh, it spams tons of debuffs unless everyone's got tenacity up or something. You're going to inflict fear on the target enemy and one other enemy for one turn. And then uh, when those expire, you get a whole host of debuffs. Uh, the three non-feared people get crit chance, uh, offense down, crit damage down, evasion down, speed down, expose and stagger. So that's six debuffs. That's crazy. And then also when the fear expires, they get all those two. So it's just insane. Like getting stagger out there like crazy. Uh, and this is actually where they tell you what fear does because she was the first one to have it. Um, can't use abilities, can't evade, increase cooldowns by one, and fear expires when taking damage. So even if you do punch them uh, when they had fear, they're going to lose a cooldown, so they're going to have to do a basic anyway. But you don't want to pop the fear, in my opinion. In Wild Lightning, this you want to use situationally. Um, I only want to use this if I really need shock on someone, or I need to put shock to cause Malak to taunt. Uh, otherwise, I want to save it to target someone that does have shock, and then it turns into an AoE. And it hits pretty hard. Can't be countered, can't be evaded. So if you target someone with shock, it turns into AoE. If you don't, you, you'll inflict shock, but that's it. So I like to open with fear most of the time, wait to use wild lightning until they're shock. Otherwise, use the basic. It's pretty good, pretty good basic. Ability block, 10% uh, more damage, and 10% crit chance for each active Sith ally. So it does hit pretty hard, and she just has pretty good offense as well so amazing kit she works super well with darth revan uh that's why i don't like to break them up in 3v3 even as like an almost 12 million account in kyber one i like darth revan and basketball together because they bounce off each other so much and do so many good things and she loses so much when not being with darth revan or, or under his leadership now we come to malik uh difficult unlock takes a long time to get him to seven stars but he is pretty fantastic we're gonna start with Jaws of Life, which is the ability that makes him super chunky. He takes reduced damage from percent health effects, and then this is the thing that makes him lose all his protection, turn into health. So no matter what you put on him, health, protection, it's all gonna go to the same place. Uh, most people put protection because he has a higher base protection, and it's easier to get a lot of it. Um, but he gains 35% crit avoidance, health steal, tenacity, and defense, while he has less than 75% health which doubles at 50% health and then triples under 25% health. So you can think of it every 25% health he loses or he's under that threshold, he is harder and harder to kill. So that's why when you get down low, it's hard to finish him off. You have the Zeta, it's going to do give him bonus turns when he hits those thresholds. Next unique, and this is probably the most valuable thing about him. Um, without the Zeta, it's just he taunts whenever an enemy is inflicted with shock or fear. And then Sith enemies can't gain bonus turn meter. This was actually not an original part of his kit. They added it to stop the Palpatine counter to Darth Revan lead because people would use Palpatine lead and win because of the crazy turn meter train. But they added this. So if enemy Sith are there, if you're facing a team with Sith or if you're going against Darth Revan with the Sith team, there's no turn meter for you. Uh, the Zeta, this is probably going to be one of the most important Zetas we add. Um, this is what adds fear. Uh, so whenever someone critically hits Malak or inflicts him with a damage over time, they're going to get feared for one turn. So I, uh, just preview to the Zeta section, that's a very important one. Um, as far as damage, he's not a huge damage dealer. His biggest damage is this Drain Life. Um, it's 
Not always. It's a cooldown of four. It starts on cooldown, uh, but the Zeta on Jaws of Life resets the cooldowns whenever he hits those thresholds. So that's why it's an important Zeta as well. Um, but it just takes 100% of enemies max health um, and then gives him a stack of the buff Dark Infusion, which he gets up to three stacks of. It's just 35% offense per stack. And then at max stacks, they're doubled, so it turns into 220% offense. And then basic attacks inflict healing immunity for two turns. So before that, his basic does not inflict healing immunity. It just inflicts tenacity down, which is valuable in itself. I mean, in this team relies on debuffs a lot so you could strategically use the basic if you need tenacity down it's not a ton of damage just utility function uh, but his first special torture is a dispel and inflict shock so the strategic use of this is you get rid of the pre-taunt on a tank inflict them with shock that causes malik to taunt and then darth revan is open to the enemy leader to use his aoe fear so that's something to keep in mind too if they already had shock fear uh, or fear stun them for two turns so that's another thing to keep in mind um because if you use that ability on someone that has fear yes they'll lose the fear but they'll get stunned so it's a nice trade-off um and yeah his kit is actually kind of simple um just super chunky causes fear on everyone and only real big damage is drain life when that cooldown resets to take 100 percent health but it's not going to work on like another malak or kylo ren unmasked that's health based damage so uh, be judicious with how you use it Next we got HK47. Uh, I know I said I'd talk about him last, but I think he fits in better to talk about early. Uh, so we don't care about his leadership. I'm not looking at that. Uh, he's unique. He, whenever a buff expires on an enemy, he recovers five percent health and protection. So this really helps against buff heavy teams like Jedi Knight Revan or even like Padme. So when they lose those buffs, he comes all the way back up, almost if they have a ton of buffs. Um, I don't recommend the Zeta at all. Um, it's just there. So this ability without the Zeta, as I recommend it, is just pretty simple. Uh, next, Loyal to the Maker. They, they added this when they added Darth Revan into the game. So if Darth Revan is the leader, uh, you're not going to be using HK-47 under Malgus because he's not a Sith, uh, so that doesn't apply at all. Like You only want to use HK-47 under Darth Revan. Pretty much I don't see a place for him otherwise. But if Darth Revan is the leader, he's going to get 50% defense, offense, potency, and tenacity. Very nice boost. 30% uh, crit avoidance for each Jedi enemy at the start of the encounter. That means if you're facing Jedi Knight Revan, he has 150% crit avoid. That's crazy. And then whenever another Sith Emperor ally is defeated, you're going to reset his assassination protocol ability. And this hits pretty hard. Like, look at these, the uh, progression on the ability levels. Usually you'll see plus 5%, 10%, but this is 10%, 10%, 20%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 50%. It is a crazy damage ability when you have it fully done. It's going to dispel buffs, can't be evaded, and does 100% more damage against Jedi. Uh, if you're hitting someone that has Death Mark or Fear, the ability to cooldown is reset. Uh, but it starts on cooldown, and it's a cooldown of 9. So you're only really getting it if someone dies on your side. It doesn't come into play too much, and it's kind of underwhelming in that regard. Uh, what I think is one of his most useful abilities is Havoc. This is an AoE that it does true damage um, so it can't crit um, uh, to all enemies and half that amount for any additional time for each debuffed enemy so if they're all debuffed uh, it's going to do five extra instances of damage which is just lesser damage so you want to use this when everyone's debuffed my favorite use of it is when everyone's got stagger from Vassal of Shawn. Uh this is really big for enters that rely on preventing the enemy team from taking any turns like Geonosians you can three-man Geonosians with the Revan, Basila and HK if you do it right you can get fear on everyone do Basila's ability and even though HK is slow all the Geos are gonna might be missing their turn HA 47 comes in hits all the staggers gives Revan and Basila another turn uh, it also inflicts tenacity down on all enemies um, and the fact that it can't be countered is just so convenient like I feel like counterattacks are ubiquitous now. Someone's always got retribution or something causing uh, counterattacks, and it's just really nice. You can hit those staggers with impunity with that. And then his basic, the last thing, just a simple basic. Um, he gains offense up for two turns. So that's pretty nice. And then it has plus 30% crit damage against debuffed enemies. So you can see the whole Darth Revan team is really revolving around debuffs and escalating your damage 
from those debuffs, whether it's on your team itself or the enemy team too. Uh, and that is HK47. Oh, and I think I misspoke a little bit on this ability. The uh, the cooldown is being reduced when you have fear. So it's not just when an ally dies. Uh, if you get five fears from Darth Revan hitting the enemy lead at first, and then a couple from Bastila, some from Malak, you will actually get there in no time. And it is pretty, it's a pretty effective move when you use it right, especially against other Jedi. And the last member of the team, my preference is Marauder, but another option is Sith Empire Trooper, just for another pre-taunt. Um, or not another pre-taunt, a pre-taunt, and another taunter in addition to Mal Malak. And if you don't have Malak, I'd recommend Sith Empire Trooper here. It's just, it's a seamless insertion. It keeps the full Sith Empire theme. Uh, but I like Sith Marauder if you do have Malak, just because he does a great amount of damage. So starting with his unique, this is actually one of the best unique, like low-key one of the best uniques out there in the game. If you put this on someone else, it'd be insane. He gets 10% defense, health steal, and tenacity for each buff on all characters. Think about that. If all the enemy has five buffs, that's 250% of all those things. It's crazy. And you can see how hard it is to kill him, even now uh, on like a Malgus team. He's hard to kill the Malgus sometimes. It's crazy. And then he also gets 2% crit chance, offense, and potency for each debuff on all characters. And this is counting all your stacks of ferocity, which very often will be like 10 on each character. So that's 50, so that's plus 100% crit chance, offense, and potency. And then whenever an enemy uses an ability outside their turn, so if they're assisting or counterattacking, he gains 20% turn meter. So he gains turn meter like crazy. Uh, and then he just hits really hard because of that. Like his special um, grants potency up to all allies for two turns. And if it's a critical hit, it reduces their max health by 15%, which can't be resisted. As And it's a really strong ability. I would save it until you have a lot of debuffs. Uh, if you get to go out first, if he gets a lot of turn meter from the enemy doing attacks at a turn or assists, and he goes before you can get a lot of debuffs out there, I'd probably hold off on that and just use the basic. It's a simple basic, just as offense down but it does a lot of damage and that's the whole thing with him he does crazy damage and he's really durable and it's all just because of this one unique that isn't even that long so he's a really strong character i uh, don't neglect him he's uh, this team i mean it's not like a super high priority for like a beginner player i it's probably coming in closer to your second year playing uh but he is really strong so i don't think you should forego him on the team and plus he's got a ship so he's a great character and I know that was a while to talk about all their mechanics, but they need the discussion because they're complex. They work together in a variety of ways. Uh, so I think it was worthwhile to talk about every aspect of their kits. Uh, now we're going to talk about modding. First, I'm going to try to briefly show my modding, um, and then we'll look at Swiga.gg for the competitive modding schema. Uh, so Darth Revan, mainly you want speed on him. However, if you're doing the Darth Revan team, you want a lot of health. Because Bastille Sean falling a stack in the health. Uh, you want either crit damage or offense as well stacked. I have right now just a health triangle because I want it to be harder to kill him. I have offense on the cross. I think either offense or health here. Either health, offense, or crit damage here. And you're pretty good to go. But as you can see, I have a lot of health on mine. Uh, Bastille Sean, you want a lot of speed, you want a lot of health, and a lot of potency. I have plus 144 on her. Health, primary, uh, potency and I think I might be breaking a cardinal rule here with giving her protection mm -mm -mm. So I'm just gonna do a little trade here and uh, I take this mod from Kanan because it still has potency and it has health uh, I lose a little bit of speed, but I'm not super super concerned about it Her health survivability is way better or her survivability is way better when you have a lot of health as opposed to protection So that was just a low prioritization thing. I do not I'm appalled at my own modding there. Uh, but yeah, potency here is a great option. Offense or health. Uh, just depends. Um, I think I picked offense just because she... Um, that was a really fast mod for her. And then Malak, you don't need... He's actually interesting because you don't need to have perfect mods for him. You don't need such good mods. I just recommend protection primary on everything absolutely everything and look how slow mine is i don't care as much he's gonna get bonus turns he's there to take hits you want to give him lots of protection tenacity is only with a very specific purpose if you can solo a bunch of teams like you might if you're watching this video you might be able to do this uh there's teams you could solo that you just need to avoid getting like stunned or something 
uh, that's when you want tenacity on him. Otherwise, you only want protection. And protection can just be 5 dot mods, so you can throw a bunch of 5 dot mods on him and be fine. I even have the speed, or have the arrow using protection, and it's not even fast at all. I could probably find better, but like protection, protection, protection for him. And then speed is only if you really like have a specific purpose where you want to get a dispel out first before you use Revan. In that case, you would need him faster than like Revan, which is very hard to do. So I don't put a bunch of speed into him. So the Marauder, you want all damage. You want crit damage triangle. You want as much offense as you can get. Speed helps too, but he's generating lots of turn meters as well. So I have crit damage triangle offense and the protection. Um, he can go either way, protection or health. It's not a big deal. HK47, my mods are not an example. I, he is completely deprioritized. I do not use him anymore personally. So I just threw some crappy speed sets on him. Um, but he's really slow. You want to mod him for damage. You want him offense crit damage, which I don't have because I sadly do not use him at all anymore and haven't for a long time. But we'll see what people use him put on him on Swig.gg. And now we're looking at Swig.gg mods. Uh, just first of all, the standard disclaimer. This is looking at mods from like the top 1000 Kyra 1 players. So they might have different purposes than you do if you're a newer player. However, I will try to discuss when I think a purpose diverges from what you might want to do as a newer player uh, and highlight that. But this is a good benchmark. This is a great players and what they use. Most common set by far is speed and health. Um, that he already benefits a lot from health like we discussed, but speed is the biggest thing. Offense is the most common on the cross. For damage, most common on the triangle. Health most common on the circle. Uh, other sets include, this is dominated by speed. Everyone uses speed. Like, no, you don't use offense. I see a lot of people, like, especially newer players, when I'm doing roster reviews using offense, no one do that. You want them to outspeed people. Like, uh, getting off first, getting getting at the gate first with Darth Revan is more important than doing a little bit more damage. He ramps up his damage like crazy anyway. These are all speed sets with a variable secondary set. The second most common is no secondary set, but then following is crit chance, not needed, mistake. Potency, tenacity. Like, I does not need a crit chance set. Uh, most common triangle, crit damage by 49, then offense 26, and health 8%. Uh, so, not everyone's using health, but I think that's actually, you know, could be a bit of a mistake. If you're using Darth, well, at least for a 3v3, if you're using Darth Revan lead, most people use it in 3v3. And it's really valuable when he's uh, him and Bastille on our team. So, I think that is a much more viable option than this number would suggest. Then the cross is either offense or health. Potency, mm, potency can help, but I really think offense or health is the way to go. Health is leading by 63%. I don't think that's a big, as big of a majority as it should have. It really should be closer to 75, 80%. And then speed is the dominant arrow. That's gonna be for most of them. Um, but that is Darth Revan. And Basil is Sean Fallen. Looks like people are really focusing on health. And then the same as Darth Revan's speed and health set. Uh, some people do all health. And that's because she stacks her health up crazy high. Um, so people are more in tune with the need for her to have health than Darth Revan, I think. Uh, and also under Malak, she's just, you want her to survive too. Like, just want her to have survivability. But speed is a huge focus. Uh, health is most common on the triangle, followed by crit damage and offense. So I have the offense right now, um, and I could stand to switch it. I, I might look into that after this, but those are all good options in my opinion. I don't think you want protection. On the cross, health is most common, followed by potency and protection and offense. I don't think you want protection. Uh, again, I think it's either offense, potency, or health. Circle, health, 68%, protection, 32%. Getting close to the super dominant majority I think it should have. Uh, but I factored into this this uh, mistake because I was one of these 317 that had protection on her until just this video. 81% have speed, but 11% have crit avoidance. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, I think maybe if you're using her with like Treya, you might want to do that, but otherwise, I'd recommend just speed. And then Malak, uh, everyone has full health sets and then protection. You're just trying to increase his hit points as much as you can. 13% um, of tenacity. It's actually only 18% of the full health, 10% of health and speed. 8% uh, have double health and tenacity. Uh, defense is great for him as well. I think you are not making a mistake if you do full defense sets on him with protection primaries. 
uh, but pro protection is just dominant here across all all mods. Triangle 86%, Ross 68%, 24% tenacity. Uh, again, make sure you have a specific purpose if you're doing that. And 93% on the circle. So this is the dominant majority I want to see. Um, that is, it is just so clear. Just protection, protection, protection. He actually has a slight edge on people putting speed on the arrow, but like barely 47% are doing protection, which I recommend as well. Uh, so he's very straightforward and it's really easy just to get a bunch of protection primaries. So he's kind of a vacation when it comes to modding someone well. HK, uh, going all for damage, crit damage, crit chance. Offense on the cross, crit damage on the triangle. This depends. Uh, either crit damage or offense, they both work, but you just want one of those as the primary set. So we combine between like two major sets, actually 32% of players are using the crit damage set and 39, 45, 45% uh, at least from this top slice of the sets is using offense. So more people according to this are using offense, which I do recommend if you have both available in the same quality. Uh, crit damage triangle dominant, followed by offense, 26%. Offense is dominant. That's the only thing I recommend on him. Uh, protection, health, doesn't matter either way. Like he's recovering stuff from buffs expiring either way. Uh, and I do think offense is a valuable option for him, but he's really slow. So the speed arrow does help him out a lot. So the Marauder, gonna be all damage, similar to HK47. Crit damage, crit chance. Uh, looks like people more dominantly prefer crit damage here. That's 60, 64% uh, at least are using crit damage sets. 14% are using offense sets. I do think crit chance can be worth it. Um, don't necessarily need it. You could use health sets secondary if you need. But the damage options, crit damage by far is preferred. Offense by far preferred on the cross. Uh, health and protection, it doesn't really matter for him. I agree with this, it could go either way. And then speed or offense on his arrow. Like, definitely an option to use offense, especially if you think you're going to be facing teams that do a lot of attacks at a turn. He's going to get turns through his uh, unique turn meter gain. He don't need tons of speed. And then just throw in here Sithenbar Trooper because he is a common use. Uh, you don't need him to be fast. You just need all defense sets and protection because he has really high base armor. Uh, so he works really, really well with defense sets. So I agree with this, like having full defense sets. Like any combination of defense or health sets can work. Uh, you want protection on every everything. Defense, I, I don't know. I, I think protection primary is the way to go. He's got great base protection. Protection, protection, protection. Don't care about speed on him. He's just there to sit and take hits. You don't care about speed. Easiest character ever to mod. Just get protection primaries. Don't even need speed. Just look for like bulky stuff. So if you're rolling... If you do, if you do like one mod refresh and roll a bunch of defense sets, odds are you're gonna get half the mods you need for him. Really easy to gear, or not gear, to mod. Uh, and that is all of the pro modding that we have analyzed. Uh, now let's move on to Zeta priorities. So the good news with this team, there's a lot of Zetas that aren't super high priority. Uh, however, once you have Malak, I think both of his Zetas take priority over anything else. However, you're probably going to have this team um, before you get Malak, because you need Darth Revan's team to unlock Malak. So Darth, some of Darth Revan's might, uh, you might actually apply before Malak's, uh, but if you have him, these are higher priority. Starting with the fear one, Gnawing Terror. This is the top priority. Um, th this is the big threat of him. Like If he gets hit, he, he causes fear. That is priority number one for Zetas. Priority number two is probably these uh, bonus turns and cooldown resets of Drain Life. It's going to keep him alive forever and make him one of the best tanks in the game. Uh, after you have those, you want to go over to Darth Revan. I think it's kind of close between his leadership and Conquer, uh, but I would go with the leadership because causing your whole team to be immune to turn meter reduction is probably more impactful than him not being able to be assisted on. However, this one is really important. If you don't have this one, Dianite Revan could just walk all over you. They could just mark you down, everyone assists, and you can gun him down um, pretty fast. You can beat him even when he does have this with Dianite Revan if you play it right. Uh, but that's really impactful. Um, 
I do think the fifth priority is this one, his health equalization with the other healthy Sally. A lot of times this just equalizes his health with Malik if you have him. And then if Malik gets too low, he just gets a bonus turn and drains life anyway to heal himself back up. So it's pretty impactful. It's pretty nice. And then last priority, like there is no other priority after this. There's six total Zetas you could have on this team possible. I don't recommend any of HKs, uh, but the last one is Sith Apprentice. Um, it might not seem like too much, plus 50% potency for her and the leader, and then foresight for one turn at the start of the battle, but that is really nice. It means unless there's an attack that can't be evaded, you're not going to get hit with her. Her or Reverend are not going to get hit first turn. And the extra potency, this team revolves around debuffs, so it's actually really helpful. So those are six are actually really good Zetas. So it's like even though her Basilis is priority number six, they're all good. However, HK-47s don't get them at all. Seth Morar doesn't have any, which is great. Um, I wish I didn't have this one. It's whenever he uses an ability, if the target has death mark or field, it fears 25% more damage. Who cares? Then loyalty to the maker, I still don't have it. Um, if Darth Revan's leader, enemies with protection up can't gain bonus turn meter. That is very good. If you, if your primary, <laughs> let me rephrase because I just said they're terrible. If your primary opponent is Jedi Knight Revan and you're just using this team to beat Jedi Knight Revan over and over again, I doubt it. But if that's how you're using it, that's actually really good. Um, that's a protection up heavy team and their gener turn meter generating team. So it is it's impactful. However, if you're facing most other stuff, it's not really going to come into play. Um, however, if you're going to do one of his Zetas, I would do that one. I just don't think you need either of his A's at all, save it for something else, save it for another team, um, which I always like when there's characters like that when they don't need the Zeta. Uh, but that is all for the Zeta discussion. Now to talk about who they counter, and it's kind of hard to go over this because there's not a lot of data in Swift.gg because everyone uses Malgus now and it's tainted by Datacrons. So I'll look at this and use my own experience to try to talk about it in conjunction. Because in reality, Darth Revan beats with Malak even without him, beats a lot of B-tier teams. So that aren't super teams like like a Malgus team or a Starkiller team in 5v5. Just those higher tier of teams are what you want to stay away from. But mo almost everything else, you can just throw them in there and they'll get it done. CLS is kind of a toss-up in his current form. If they have the full good CLS team, 78%, which is pretty good. But you need to be careful how you're doing it because the counterattacks could kill you. Uh, General Grievous this is a good, it's a good counter to them. You got to play it right. It's not always going to be easy. Uh, Grievous is going to get off some, some hits and that causes the banners to go down in 5v5. But the key is you want to get someone under 50% health and then he's death marked and then you zerg them down. That's how you beat Grievous. Um, so it's actually a really good counter if you do it right. Uh, Raz here, probably going to be an easy counter. Never done it myself, but I can see it. Geonosians. Great counter. They are a great counter to them. And you only need three characters. You can do it with Revan, Bastila, and HK. If you have them fast enough, you start with Force Storm. Get all the shock out there and the ferocity. Um, and then do on the second turn, use Insanity once you can get to GBA. Uh, but you want to fear every, as many people as you can with Bastila. And then if HK is fast enough, he can stagger everyone. So it just depends. You can three mana if you have a pretty fast HK. Otherwise, probably want to bring in a whole team. They're a great Geonosian counter. Dark Killer can work. In 3v3, it's more likely to work with Darth Revan, Bastila, and Malak can be a Star Killer team more easily. Um, Maul, it just depends who's out there. Um, seems like if they have uh, armor on the team, it's harder for Darth Revan. If they have uh, Bam or not Darth Revan, it's easier. It could be Tuskens. Treya with Omicron's probably not going to work. Gas, definitely not. Um, however, if you, like, back in the day when the gas meta took over Darth Revan, people would use Darth Revan, Bastila, Malak, Han, and Chewie, and they could be gas. Uh, but you probably don't want to do it. And, like, you'll just see, it's a lot of, like, B-level teams. You got Grand Inquisitor here, Bad Batch, doesn't work, Drench. It, it's more of a question of what can they not beat. Like, they can't beat those super meta teams, like Galactic Legend teams. There's not really, they used to be able to beat... Jedi Master Luke, and they still can. If you have Darth Revan, Bastila, and Watt, sometimes you can beat Jedi Master Luke teams. 
um, especially in 3v3, but it all depends. Um, however, they, they can counter a lot of stuff. In mirrors, you need to be doing it right. They beat Ident, like it's just so much stuff that they beat. So super valuable team, don't have an exhaustive list of what they counter, but it's pretty much unless it's a super powerful team, like like the teams that rival GLs basically, uh, they're gonna have a good time with them. And what if you are facing a Darth Revan, which is much more common than facing like a Jedi Knight Revan team on defense, what can you do to beat them? Um, there's there's a good number of counters that are actually pretty tricky to pull off. I think the most common right now is Imperial Troopers. If you have a fast enough Piet and you can go ahead of Darth Revan, uh, you can beat them. You can get a Terminator train off, uh, kill, try to avoid Malak, try to avoid fearing people, and if your Dark Trooper is strong enough, eventually you can kill off a whole team, leave alone Malak, and Zerg him down eventually. However, you need a lot of speed. Don't just try it with a slow Piet. You need to outspeed their Darth Revan. You can also win with Jedi Knight Revan. Um, if you look at stats, it's very low. But the, what you need to do, you need Jedi Knight Revan faster, mark Darth Revan, um, and then he's marked, and you're not gonna get the assist if he has Conqueror Zeta, but it's gonna increase his cooldowns, and you're gonna be able to target him. Uh, then what you do, you use a basic with Yoda if it comes to it, because um, you, you want Yoda going second. And then with Bastila, you'll put the buffs on him. If you if there's a Sith Empire Trooper available, target him so he gets turn meter. Um, at, what you're going for is just a one shot of Darth Revan. And then you put um, Master's Training on Yoda, Basically, you want him as beefed up as possible. Only works it with a really strong Yoda. Hermit Yoda doesn't have to be like geared up well. Like you could do it with like a gear six or something. Just get Grandmaster's training on him. Then you want to use Yoda's second special on Darth Revan, and hopefully take him out 100% to zero. It's hard to do, but it can work. Uh, CLS, I think this revolves around picking the team apart slowly, uh, hope, hoping Revan gets some counterattacks on him. It's not super, uh, this isn't super reliable. I probably wouldn't recommend it, but you want to isolate, wait until Malak's the last and then go for it. Um, the the RS Sing team, this revolves around just doing enough abilities before they go and then you um, snipe Darth Revan or Malak. Um, I think you probably want to start with sniping Darth Revan because he's more of a threat to shut down the whole team. Stay there to get speed off if she has her Omicron. Uh, you need a good amount of speed though, like Zam, you probably need Zam Omicron to outspeed in most cases. Uh, but RS Sings, contract is easy to get off, just use a bunch of abilities and you'll get there. Um, Padme, it's not super reliable, uh, it could be done. I think you probably want Mace as a fifth here, just for Shatterpoint for taking out Darth Revan. Uh, but you need to make sure you have a lot of... Uh, turn a lot of those debuffs into Courage eventually. Padme is immune to fear, so wait till Bas uh, Basil Sean Fallen gets all the debuffs out, turn them into Courage stacks, and then take out Darth Revan, Bastila, all those uh, high priority targets, and then eventually you will you will be able to kill Malak with Shatterpoint through Mace Windu. And then this is an oldie um, that's not used much anymore, and this is mainly for like, if you see it in Squad Array, it's terrible banners, or if you're desperate. This is the Grievous Nuke team. You use IG-88 lead, and then a bunch of droids that are basically there to die. B3M4 uh, is common. IP Imperial Probe droid. Most people don't have it, but you can... The only indispensable one is probably BB-8, which gives a lot of turn meter to the team. Uh, and then you want Grievous taking a lot of turns as these others die. I'm actually not an expert on it. You could look up old videos on it, but it does work. It's just Grievous going, going in there doing his thing, using... Skittering Horror and taking out people one at a time. It's only if you have a pretty strong Grievous. The rest of the team can be like low gear just because they want to die. Uh, look it up. It's kind of funny. Uh, and that is the counters I'm recommending to him that people watching this video are more likely to have. Now we get to the part of the video that is actually the most fun for me because I am playing the game. Um, we're, we have a Galactic Challenge right now that actually has Darth Revan in it itself, which is kind of cool uh, to use as an example, because it's a mirror match, which is one of the more tricky battles, and it does I can double demonstrate the mechanics of Darth Revan, what they're doing to me, and what I'm doing to them. Uh, tier 10 might be a little bit difficult. The, the enemy doesn't have Malak. Uh, they have Talon, but there's still... I think they're going to outspeed me, because they just have juiced up speed. Uh, so let me put it in one time speed. 
Uh, so yeah, I almost outsped, and I have fast mods, but they get off, they put fear on everyone. Um, Darth Revan. Okay, <laughs> that did not, that did not work. Uh, but when, you see what happens when you get out, when they get out first, they absolutely dominate. Um, so he got feared because he hit my Malik. I have death mark. Uh, what my goal would be in this match is to get someone under 50% health and then use death mark and then kill Darth Revan with death mark. So let me try a little bit of a lower tier because, uh, they're blowing me out of the water there. Unfortunate that I don't outspeed. I'm not going to remod for it, but if you outspeed here. I can take the driver's seat and demonstrate better what this team does. Still not faster, um, but we might survive. Okay, he did the basic. So now we're open. I don't have corrupted battle meditation on me, uh, so I can use this insanity and fear all of them. However, Marauder, uh, HK, and Basila do have corrupted battle meditation. They would not be able to debuff me if they get a turn, uh, and that includes corrupted battle meditation. So. I don't, well, I don't know how she landed that on us. Uh, but Basila Shan Fallen has, it does not have Corrupted Battle Meditation, so I can use my uh, debuffs and land them. However, if she had it, it wouldn't have worked. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and really try to hammer Revan, uh, get him under half health, and then go for the, maybe that's someone. Uh, actually, I could have forced Strain Revan, but now he has Death Mark. So, since he has Death Mark, my Darth Revan would assist uh, if they didn't have that Zeta, but they do, so we are not getting that assist. Getting extra 50% health damage from that Death Mark. Strain Life, because Malak is getting hurt. He's dead. <laughs> um, they have fear, so I'm not going to attack them. So, I'm instead off for Talon. And she has Corrupted Battle Mentation, so this will attack twice. Get those kills. And again, the fear there, so I don't want to pop it. And I think basic is probably good enough. Uh, there's not any buffs out there at all, so Sith Marauder is actually a lot weaker. If this was a buff heavy team, he would be really hard to kill. But it's not, so. And also, HK47 is not recovering his uh, health and protection because there are no buffs as well, so he's a little bit easier to kill. And there we go. Um,. Didn't get the speed out first. Let me try just a little bit lower. So this is only a gear 13. If they still have them juiced up, I guess the speed isn't modified by the relics, but if they still have this guy faster than my 355 Darth Revan, that's ridiculous, man. Like these, like the challenges are so overtuned. You get out there, start with the uh, fear on everyone. Uh, this is what I made the mistake of before. See that damage? Like 260k. It's because of all these debuffs. In a mirror, he's amazing. Uh, but she didn't... I went straight from over 50% health to zero. So I actually did not trigger death mark. Uh, so we're really trying to get that death mark here. Get ourselves more ferocity. And there, we got under 50% health. So we get the death mark. Very useful. Alan triggered and healed him up. But yeah. It's a, it's a crazy mirror. It's like in PvP, it's actually like you go first or you just completely lose. So they AI does some done mistakes with it, but still able to come out on top. Fear is insane. Their damage stacks sky high. Just a really fun team to use, in my opinion. So that is it for this one. Darth Revan Squad for noobs. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoy. Um, and it's a great team. Make use of them before... <laughs> You get Malgus, uh, it takes forever to get. It's just an amazing team on its own right. Really fun, tons of damage. Uh, don't forget to leave any questions you have down below or any observations or something you think I might have missed, share down below. Don't forget to like, sub, sub to this channel if you haven't already, share the video, all that stuff. I uh, appreciate it, guys. See you later.